remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh yes, my friends, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Well, that's what we are here to discover. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the music, and the spoken word. You're watching Light Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor J. Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 55... There it is, at 55 minutes, I can't get over that. For the next 25 minutes, as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. I just can't get used to the half-hour program. Ah. Nonetheless, we're here to have Bible study. Now, of course, it's my Bible study time that I spend with you. We do it each and every Sunday through Thursday right here on accesstv.org and, of course, on Facebook and uh, a Google Plus, Google Hangout. So, sit back, relax, grab pencil and paper, of course, your Bible, telephone, so you can call up friends and family, send out your emails, your text messages, your tweets, and all the things necessary in order to draw a crowd to this great Bible study opportunity. Stick and stay, don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Broadcasting, of course, live from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star. It is time for Bible study. All right, my friends, welcome aboard. How are you doing? I hope you're doing, uh, 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 I mean, like half as good as I'm doing. Because if you are, you're doing exceedingly, abundantly, totally, thoroughly well. Mm, 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 mm. All right, let's get started and get underway. Uh, uh, how's your day? Are you having a good day? I'm having a good day. It's, it's been busy. It, uh, it was a very busy day, and, um, you know, I don't care whether you're having an up day, a down day, a good day, a bad day, whatever the day is, it's always a good time for Bible study. So, um, with that, let us get started. Let's put the Bible up on your television screen. The life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. There it is. want to remind you that we do not review. This is my Bible study time that I spend with you. Of course, we try and do it each and every uh, Sunday through Thursday right here on uh, accesstv.org. And uh, we want you to make it an make an effort to be here with us, okay? Um, we uh, always pick up where we were last. So uh, what you see on your screen is where we were when we uh, when we signed off last night, and the um, Romans chapter nine verse one. So rather than to spend a lot of time going over review and things like that, what we will do is pick it right up. Now, if you want to get caught up and stay caught up, uh, all you have to do is uh, log on to uh, accesstv.org, click on Light Source Ministries, and that will bring you to the post, I mean the past shows that we've done, the previous, previous programs. Okay, so that's all that's necessary if you want to um, if you want to want to want to get caught up. You stay caught up by tuning in every night or every day, whenever it is that you watch 
this program, um, it's up to you to stay up to speed. All right. So um, with that, let's get started. All right. On your screen, life changing, life giving, everlasting word of the most high God. All right. Let's get underway. On this side of your television screen is the new Living Translation. All right. On this side of your screen is the King James, King James Version. I will leave them both up because if you had mentors like mine, my mentor used to always tell me if it wasn't in the King, if it isn't in the King James, it isn't in the Word of God. All right. But we know that there are other translations. And so we use the modern English version because it allows us to, um, how shall we say, um, uh, read it in a, a more understandable dialect. Uh, nobody speaks Old English anymore. And uh, the average person doesn't uh, necessarily um, appreciate uh, the understanding of such uh, a coded language. Uh, it's like going into the heart of the hood and having a conversation or into the you know, the, the hills of Kentucky and uh, people say things that you have no idea what they're talking about because you're just not, you're not familiar with the dialect. Uh, and so we all speak modern English, so why not read out of a modern English translation? I mean, that, that's, just, that's just my view. Okay, let's get started, my friends. In the presence of Christ, I speak with utter truthfulness. I do not lie. And my conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm that what I am saying is true. Romans chapter 9, verse 2 at the top of your screen. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ if it would save them. They are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's special children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave his law to them. They have the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Their ancestors were great people of God and Christ himself was a Jew as far as his human nature is concerned and he is God who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise amen well then has God failed to fulfill his promise to the Jews no for not everyone born into a Jewish family is truly a Jew. Just the fact that they are descendants of Abraham doesn't make them truly Abraham's children. For the scriptures say, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted, though Abraham had other children as well. This means that Abraham's physical descendants are not necessarily God's children or the children of God, one might say. It is the children of the promise who are considered to be Abraham's children. For God had promised, next year I will return and Sarah will have a son. Are you with me? Let's continue. This son was our ancestor Isaac. When he grew up, he married Rebekah, who gave birth to twins. But before they were born, they had, before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message from God. This message proves that God chooses according to his own plan. All right. See, God's sovereignty is not robbed because you are not happy with his choice. Okay? God always maintains the, uh, the, 
the sovereign authority to do whatever he wants. All right. And so if God makes a decision to do something a particular way, then that's the way it's going to be done. It's real simple. All right. You know, it's real, real simple. The, the, the problem isn't God. The problem is you and your unwillingness to accept the conditions that God lays down. There's nothing wrong with the word. There's nothing wrong with the integrity of the word. There's nothing wrong with what God says you can and can't do. The only thing wrong is that you don't want to obey. It's just that simple. And folk really need to keep it that simple and that plain. All right, for the abonically challenged, that simple and that plain. Verse 11, read it once again. They moved on down to verse 12. But before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message from God. This message proves that God is what? God chooses according to his own plan, not according to our good or bad works. She was told, the descendants of your older son will serve the descendants of your younger son. In the words of the scripture, I loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. What can we say? Was God being unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose. And I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So receiving God's promise is not up to us. We can't get it by choosing it or working hard for it. God will show mercy to anyone he chooses. Now we understand that God's mercy is accomplished through the completed and finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Remember, mercy is a very specific type of love that is determined by the object. Grace is that which God may be free to do, indeed that which he does on behalf of Christ after that he has, after the Christ has paid the price. Okay, so in short, in order for God to be merciful, he has to have something to be merciful with. This light is about to go out. Okay, there we go. You have to have something to be merciful with. All right. I can't extend to you mercy to go see the new James Bond movie at $10 a ticket um, if I don't have the $10 to give you for your ticket. All right. I, I just can't. We're losing that light. That's, that's okay. Onward. These are the trials and tribulations of the broadcasting. All right. So if I want to be merciful and send you to the movies, I have to, at the very least, have the, the cost of the movie ticket in order to send you to the movie theater. Right? Absolutely. So if you have $9 and the cost of the ticket is $10 and I give you the um, dollar, then I have met sufficiently the lack that you were suffering. All right? You, 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 you were deficient. You fell short by one dollar. Now, another guy might have a dollar and need nine. So he is deficient or falls short by nine dollars so i'll give him nine dollars now some may say well that's not fair i mean why don't you give both of them nine dollars that would be the fair thing to do no what's fair is making sure that both have what's necessary to make it in and god does that through the work of christ all have sinned and come short of the glory of god so god makes the provision to all to enter in now, they need a little bit more. Some need more than others to make it in, but the price is paid for everybody. And so for, my, for, for some, it might take, uh, there might be a few things that they find necessary to, uh, to do. And then there are others 
that might have to do a multitude of things. All right. And I say that only in the sense of external comparison traps because as we've just read, as we've just read, there's nothing you can do in an effort to earn your way in. You can't work your way in or, or do something that, <laughs> that uh, measures up to a standard whereby you gain access because of your works. What you do is you accept God's merciful gift of salvation, which is the completed finishing, finished work of Christ. All right, that bulb is going, it's making odd noises. That's okay. These things happen in the broadcast world. Lights go out, bulbs blow, sometimes cameras fall over. These things happen in a real world broadcast. We generally don't let them phase us, but uh, you know, the light sounds like it's getting ready to explode over my, over my shoulder. I apologize, I digress, but we will press our way and let us continue. So, receiving God's promise is not up to us. We can't get it by choosing it or working hard for it. God will show mercy to anyone he chooses. The Bible says what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Since all have sinned and come short of God's glory, that means all are condemned. So whoever winds up on the side of salvation is someone who was saved by God's grace or by God's mercy. Right? So, so everyone saved is, a re, is, is, is someone who has received God's merciful gift. See, they're all we are all condemned. Here is condemnation. The Christ came into the world, but men preferred darkness over the light, so they choose to stay in the darkness and they choose to reject the light they choose to reject Christ Christ doesn't come into the world to condemn the world he comes in the world to set the world free from the condemnation so if anyone rejects him they remain condemned okay it isn't like also oh, I gotta accept Jesus or, or he gonna send me to hell no if you don't accept Jesus he won't rescue you or prevent you from going there you're already going there. That, that's, I was on my way to hell. Okay? It, it is what it is. It's sort of like if you were in Israel right now and uh, someone knew exactly where the next missile was going to land. And they told you in advance. Now, if you don't leave, then you was going, you're going to be condemned. All right? But because you know and you act on that information, you, you, can, you can escape. And the people that were in the Twin Towers on 9-11 above said floor were doomed. They, they were doomed. They, they got up and came out. They were doomed a week earlier because they didn't know. But, but, but had they known, or if some, as some would like to think, knew in advance and didn't go in, well, they had an opportunity to get special information they someone was merciful to them or someone could have been merciful to them do you understand what i'm saying all right so the condemnation doesn't come because of the rescuer the condemnation comes because you are in a place where you ought not uh where you really don't want to be okay you are in a horrible state of 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 doom one might say hell bound all right because of sin and we've already established that in reading through the first parts of romans all right for those of you who haven't been here and missed it well you go back and read it so you see top of your screen i'm sorry go back up one first because we didn't read that verse Verse 17 at the top of your screen, I am sorry. For the scriptures say that God told Pharaoh, I will have, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you. And so that the fame might spread throughout the earth. All right. So God placed Pharaoh. 
in a position so that through Pharaoh, God might demonstrate his power. For the scriptures say that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for, a very, for the very purpose of displaying my power in you. And so that the fame, that my fame might spread throughout the earth. So, you see, God shows mercy to some just because he wants to. And he chooses to make some people refuse to listen. Well then, you might say, why does God blame people for not listening? Haven't they simply done what he told them to do? Verse 20. No, don't say that. Who are you, a mere human being, to criticize God? Should the thing that was made or that was created say to the one who made it, why have you made me this way? When a potter makes jars out of clay, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and the other jar to throw garbage into? God has every right to exercise his judgment and his power, but he also has the right to be very patient with those who are the objects of his judgment and are fit only for destruction. That's the biblical way of saying what I just said. God can do what he wants. Okay? They're all do. We are all sinners. There are none that are righteous, no, not one. For all have gone astray. We all seek after our own way. We are all outwardly demonstrating a inward defective sinful desire to do what pleases us openly rejecting God's will that is an outward sign of our brokenness and God can discard us just like you discard things in your household that aren't working properly you go through most people's refrigerator, mine included, there's those types of things that ought not be in it because they're old or spoiled. So what do you do? You throw them out. Some may never have spoiled things in the refrigerator because they throw them out rather than put them in the refrigerator in hopes of eating them before they spoil. So you determine, I no longer want the rest of this and you throw it away. I no longer need use of that, so you throw it away. Oh, my computer is three years old. I don't need it anymore. So you throw it away or you discard it to some nonprofit or something like that. You, you no longer have need of it. It's not of any use to you anymore. You get a new car because your old car doesn't suit you. It runs fine. It's just not in style anymore. So you throw it away. Old garments, you throw them away or you, you give them to some other uh, person or entity that is that's worthy to you but they're discarded by you all right now don't you have the right to do that well how do you think the clothes feel after being thrown aside well for your purpose were the clothes purchased for your purpose what's a computer purchased for your purpose were the was the car purchased because you desired to have it you acquired it and you used it for your purpose and now the purpose is suited, it's free and you go on, all right? You raise chickens or goats or cows, okay? Or cows are raised maybe not by you, but when you go to the store, you purchase them, all right? For what purpose was this cow born? That it might grow up, be fed, slaughtered so that you can have hamburger with cheese and onions next week, okay? Doesn't the cow have the right to tell you not to eat me? Doesn't the turkey have a right to life? Shall the thing that was made say to he who made it, how dare you use me for such? Well, that's what it really comes down to. Now, of course, you don't want to think of it that way because you think of yourself in a totally different light. 
But God has every right to exercise his judgment, particularly over things that are of no value, that are defective. But God loves his creation. And he demonstrates his love for his creation with the earthly manifestation of the Logos, the living word, where Christ puts on a tent of human flesh and goes to the cross of Calvary to be physically and brutally tortured and then pours out life's precious blood for the remission of sins. That act demonstrates God's love for us. That act demonstrates God's willingness to do whatever it takes to buy you back. But he can't make you choose him. That's a choice that only you can make. It is what's necessary to initiate the grace of God in your life. That you might be a recipient of God's mercy. He also has the right to pour out the riches of his glory upon those he prepared. Verse 23 at the top of your screen he also has the right to pour out mercy the riches right to pour out the riches of his glory on those he prepared to be the objects of his mercy even upon us whom he selected both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Verse 25, top of your screen. Concerning the Gentiles, God says, in the prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people will now call, I will now call my people, and I will love those whom I did not love before. And once they were told, you are not my people, but now he will say, you are children of the living God. Concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried out, though the people of Israel are as numerous as the sand on the seashore, only a small number will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality. And Isaiah said in another place, if the Lord Almighty had not spared a few of us, we would have been wiped out as completely as Sodom and Gomorrah. Well then, what shall we say about these things? Just this. The Gentiles have been made right with God by what? Faith. Even though they were not seeking him. But the Jews who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law and being good instead of depending on faith. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. God warned them of this in the scripture when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. But anyone who believes in him will not be disappointed. Now that will give you something to chew on and ponder over because, of course, as is always the case with this program, we've run out of time. I hate the fact that we run out of time. There's nothing I can do about it. Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, I don't yet possess the power to stop time. And that, my friends, is a good thing. All right? All right, well, our time together has come to an end. We'll take care of some technical issues. Light blew out on us. It always happens at the worst time. At least it wasn't no loud explosion that caused you to duck and run for cover. All right. 
When it's all said and done, though, the only thing you need to know is this fact, and that is, of course, that Jesus Christ saves and changes lives. Won't you call on his name and allow him to be Lord of your life? Walk by faith and not by sight. Put your faith and trust in him. It's not about your good works. It's about his mercy, his tender kindness, his willingness to stoop down below the angels, put on a tent of human flesh so that you could have everlasting life. He loves you more than you will ever know. If you submit to him, surrender your will to his, call on his name to be Lord and Savior of your life, watch how your life changes. Watch how things start to fall into place and come to a state of order out of chaos. Walk by faith. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Stay strong in the faith and tell someone else about Jesus Christ. Good night. Good night.